Today, I want to talk about the sensory motor system and training. I encountered the concept from the physiotherapist in 2003. I wanted to expand my knowledge and train myself from the original place. So, I flew to Norway next year in 2004. The company headquarters was placed in the beautiful city of Arendal. Nowadays, it has changed its brand name to Red Court. I was young and energetic. These two teachers trained me without hesitation and showed great hospitality. I cannot forget the gratitude for sharing knowledge, great teacher Kike Sola Ji. He is a pioneer in adapting the sensory motor system into exercise therapy. The concept of sensory motor system and training expanded my perspective as a pain practitioner. I might have stayed in the two-dimensional world if I had only insisted on the injection treatment. Embracing the knowledge of functional systems, starting from the sensory motor system, I can think more three-dimensional world of the human being as a living organism. So now I want to share the concepts with the pain specialist. Let's go to the main topic. Here is the diagram showing a relation between structure, function, and pain in the musculoskeletal system. Let me talk about structure first. The human musculoskeletal system consists of muscles, tendons, bones, and joints. There are other systems such as circulatory system and nervous system. How about the pain? As pain physicians, we are looking at the pain itself, so I will not talk long about the pain. We divide the pain into acute and chronic pain. We also classify it into nociceptive pain and neuropathic pain. The pain doctors are trying to correlate pain and structural damages. The somatic structures cause pain such as skin injury, bone fracture, annular tear, disc protrusion, and facet joint osteoarthritis. The pain doctors are trying to correlate pain and structural damages. Peripheral neural injuries and diabetic peripheral neural damages cause neuropathic pain. The immune cell abnormalities in the dorsal horn of a spinal cord are the structural abnormalities explaining neuropathic pain. What's about the structure and function? What is a function? In daily life, we walk, run, and do house chores. Sometimes, we enjoy extreme sports. These activities are a function of the musculoskeletal system. Does the intact structure guarantee functional excellence? To get high-quality performance, we must learn and develop the skill and repeat the functional movement. To understand the function, I have to introduce the sensory motor system. The sensory motor system consists of sensory input, central integration, and motor output. The sensory signal arises from the visual neurons, vestibular apparatus, and proprioceptive signals from the mechanoreceptors in muscle, ligament, tendon, and joint capsules. These sensory signals transfer to the central nervous system. The sensory signals integrate in the brain and make complex motor signals. The motor signal transfer to entire muscles to correct joint control and overall balance. Let's think about the signal transfer step by step while hitting the baseball. The hitter notice the wind-up and swing movement of the pitcher and the ball's direction via the visual system in a second. The central nervous system integrates sensory signals and modulates motor signals. The motor signals 
transfer to control the entire body via muscle and joint control. Let me describe more about the sensory motor system by the diagram. The external forces ignite sensory signal production in the vision, vestibular apparatus, and proprioceptors. These sensory signals transfer to the central nervous system. The central nervous system compare, choose, and combine impressions. It gathers position senses of the body and choose body movement. It decides and adjusts muscular contraction patterns to control the movement of the ankle, knee, hip, spine, etc. It generates body movement. The generated body movement changes the external forces. Newly formed external forces also change new sensory signals in the vision, vestibular apparatus, and proprioceptors. These circuits run continuously, readjusting and reforming to achieve the goal. Our body has several typical muscular contraction patterns for harmonious and efficient movement. We call it a free forward mechanism. It means pretty active muscle control in anticipation of weight load or subsequent actions. Let me explain more. When we are running or jumping, the ground reaction forces are formed to the counter forces of the applied force. The ground force transfers its energy to our body chain sequentially. These movement patterns are pre-programmed starting from the leg to hip, trunk, shoulder, etc. The sequence and timing of each muscles are also pre-programmed. For example, each component of the deep back muscle activates differentially in the lumbar multifidus muscles deep and superficial fibers. These researchers let the volunteers move the arm repeatedly and check the electrical signals from the EMG of the back muscles. They observe the peaks in the superficial multifidus and erector spinae muscle only during flexion, whereas peaks in the deep multifidus occurred during movement in both directions. The deep and superficial fibers of the multifidus are differentially active during single and repetitive movement of the arm. In healthy subjects, voluntary activity in the abdominal muscles result in increased pelvic floor muscle activity. The increase in pelvic floor pressure before the abdominal pressure increase indicates that this response is pre-programmed. The recruitment of the muscles occurs for the lumbar stability. They are the transversus abdominis, obliques internus abdominis, obliques externus abdominis, rectus abdominis, and erector spinal muscles. These muscles activate during the rapid shoulder flexion at different timing. They demonstrated that in normal volunteers, the onset of transverse abdominus EMG activity is faster than that of the deltoid. We can apply this concept in chronic low back patients. The pattern and timing of the recruitment of the trunk muscles were proven to be altered in the chronic back pain patients. Let's move on to the training of the sensory motor system. Which step do you think is the most efficient to increase the performance? In the past, increasing muscle power was the most crucial part of the training. Of course, weight training is essential for athletes in competitive sports. It is a demonstration of how muscle strengthening training works. However, it only focuses on the muscle and motor signals. You already supposed that it cannot correct the timing and sequence of recruitment. But 
if you increase the sensory signal, the signal stimulates central integration and afferent motor signal. It also increases muscular activation. We must train the patients to correct the altered sequence and timing of the crucial muscles. How can we increase sensory input and rehabilitate the altered muscle recruitment? The sensory input can be increased in the unstable base, such as the balance ball training. The stability ball workout strengths weak spots and improves balance. The neural method is a unique training system for chronic musculoskeletal pain. It acquires its effect by increasing and facilitating sensory input signals via unstable suspension sling and vibration. Closed kinetic chain exercise focuses on the joint functional training and increases dynamic stabilization. It is an example of a closed kinetic chain exercise. It is a closed kinetic chain exercise focusing on the trunk and spine. The feet and left arm are fixed. Then, what is the open kinetic chain exercise? It focuses on the isolated training of individual muscles. It is a typical open chain exercise. The wrist and hand are free to move. Practically, the re-establishment of neuromuscular control is best achieved through a combination of activities in both an open and closed kinetic chain. What's about pain and function? The pain inhibits motor system excitability at the central and spinal levels. The motor unit recruitment stretches are altered during pain to maintain force. The MSK pain causes reduced motor responses with functional deficits. Muscle pain reduces maximal voluntary contraction and endurance time during sub-maximal contractions. Furthermore, muscle pain causes an adaptive change in the coordination during dynamic exercise. The maximal voluntary contraction during muscle pain was significantly lower than the control condition. The increased EMG activity of antagonistic muscle to the painful muscle is probably a functional adaptation of muscle coordination to limit movements. According to research, a reduced sensory motor function is one of the significant characteristics of chronic musculoskeletal pain. There is much evidence about the correlation between chronic pain and sensory motor deficits. Likewise, we can use sensory motor facilitation to improve chronic pain. Their results revealed a substantial reduction in phantom limb pain intensity obtained with the training protocol. Here is a diagram showing the relation between structure, function, and pain. Each part affects the other system and entire system. I don't know much about physiotherapy or sensory motor control training, but I do understand how it is essential for chronic pain management. Here is the message that I want to apply sensory motor system to the ankle sprain. Nothing happens with the reason. We might have injured the ankle without significant pain several times before the considerable injury in the past. There are many mechanoreceptors in the ligaments. There are many ligaments in the ankle. As a result, the mechanoreceptors are more abundant in the ankle than any other joint. As a result, the proper sensory signal is essential for the stability of the ankle joint. The repeated slight injury cause injure the sensory receptors and decrease the sensory motor function. Something small gathers gets bigger. At some point, the muscle 
controlling the ankle did not respond appropriately and caused injury and caused significant ankle sprain. How we prevent the ankle sprain? Balance ball training. The simple exercise facilitates the sensory motor system to prevent an accident. Thank you for watching. See you in the following videos. Mm -hmm.